Just calling Bristow and Souter on behalf of. Let's take it here, the room. Hello, who's that, sorry? It's Neil from Bristow and Neil, hi, are you the bailiff? Well, yeah, we're in enforcement. Right, OK. Um, well, I'm calling on behalf of somebody. Uh... Oh, right, yes, OK, yes. Yeah, I'll get to drink it too. You want to get the records? Yeah, I'll get it. Uh, yeah, there we go, yeah. Um, she has been paying on a standing order, but it's sort of... Finished around about the seventh of January uh, because it looks like she's been on permanently review agreements. Right, and what agreements has she made with you? Um, it looks like she was doing about five pounds a week, and this has been ongoing since two thousand and oh, two thousand twelve. Uh, yeah. Around about, looks like about 2012, December time. Right, and then what's this enforcement stage fee that she's got by 6pm Wednesday? Right, what's happened is, is um, she's been having regular um, review agreements. Where, with, so with she's who? been doing so much and then we've been resetting another agreement and so forth. She's been doing that for the last two years. Right, OK. Three years now. But what's happened is, on the 7th of January, which was the last payment on a standing order, she was supposed to ring back again right. to reset another review agreement. Um, of the, the officer wrote to us, and the council have been in contact with her. Uh, we've tried contacting her a few times. Right. And we've had no reply back, and then the council advised us, because we had it on hold for a little while as well, and then the council said to continue with the account because we hadn't had any more contact from... Right, OK. We don't know what the situation is with her or what's happening or... Right, OK. Or anything else, really. So, obviously, that's where it's all gone quiet. There hasn't been in the last two months. So, what are your plans? Well, really, to try and get her back on track again. I mean, if she can't pay it in full, to try and get her another arrangement going, as we've done before in the past. Just like I said, for the last two but months, that, drama. yeah. But you're from what was it, Bristow and Sutter? Yes, Bristow and Sutter. And your involvement in this is what? We're the enforcement for Litchfield District Council. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Um, well, I'm actually calling from uh, Response UK. Have, have you heard of okay. us? Yes. Yes. You have. Right. Okay. Well, we've put an in, we've instructed her to um, uh, totally ignore Bristow and Sutter. Uh, we've also instructed her to keep all her property, not goods for levy, but property, locked, doors locked, windows closed. She's not going to talk or deal with you at any point. There will she be no... She doesn't need to lock her windows anymore. Sorry? She doesn't need to lock her windows anymore. That's up to us, really. Well, no, um, no, no. What I'm advising is she doesn't need to because you do know it's enforcement and not bailiffs anymore. What's the difference? Well, Bailey ceased to exist about nearly a year ago in April. Right. So why are they still trying to threaten people for funds and things? They do because it's no enforcement tribunal court's enforcement. So if we wanted to enter the property, we'd have to do it through an open door anyway. There's no going through windows or flying through holes in roofs or anything like that. It's all proper communal doors. No windows. It's all enforcement now. So Bailey ceased to exist um, last April. It's all now the tribunal court's enforcement. Right, OK. So... Uh, all the regulations have changed now. Yes, yeah, so she's not going to be having any dealings with you whatsoever. OK. Because you don't actually have the authority, because we know that you don't have real warrants to try and enforce onto people with a real judge's wetting signature and a real uh, court seal, which isn't just a stamp that says the county court and whatnot. 
It's you just you have know, liability orders. No, the, well, a liability order is not a warrant, is it? it what you need... No, what we, that's what we do with these liability orders. Yeah, so you've got no real authority then. You, you, you won't be able to keep... Yeah, you won't be able to enter the property because the doors and windows are closed and locked. Um, you won't be able to force entry or threaten locksmiths or any of that sort of stuff. You wouldn't force entry without a walking possession being signed anyway. And she would have to agree that and consent to it, wouldn't she? She would have to sign a walking possession, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, obviously she's not going to be signing any walking possession orders or anything like that. She doesn't want anything to do with you, basically. OK. So, realistically, what you'd need to do then is you'd need to... Well, she requires you, and obviously me as her representative from Response UK plus Beat the Bailiffs and the Banks, um, we require you to pass the matter back to Litchfield Council. I won't be doing that. The council would have to request that back from us. Well, I mean, it's it's up to you. I mean, you can keep knocking the door and putting letters through the door. No, but... what, yeah, what I'm saying is I can't send it back to the council. The council would have to request it because he would have to go through its various stages of, of visits yeah. during the day, during the evening, during the weekend. Because okay. obviously enforcement now is seven days a week. So okay. obviously he would have to go through all the regulations and visits first before I can send it back. I just can't send it back like that. It would have to be requested from Litchfield District Council or that it's had its subsequent amounts of visits done at the property at various times and at various days. And what is but that? the council can go back, you see. And what's the subsequent amount of visits? How do you mean, sorry? Is there a quota of number of knocks on the door before you pass it back, or what? It's, um, it's usually a few visits during the day, um, and then a few visits unsociable, whether that's before half past eight in the morning or after six o'clock at night or a call on over a Saturday or a Sunday, they also deem as outside of hours. We have to have normal hours and outside of hour calls done. Right, OK. Well, I mean, I can tell you now that she won't answer the door to anybody that's from your company at all. Because... That's fine, yes. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. It's just that we have to do that, I'm afraid. It's standard procedure. So that's just a case of you doing your job? Yes, yes. It has to go through, because if it doesn't, then the council can't issue an arrest warrant, you see. If he well, have the, the council, the, yeah, this is the thing you see. The council don't have any authority to administer an arrest warrant of any sort. You see, this comes under civil law, and in all civil matters, there is no recourse for criminal warrants of arrest because that would come under criminal law. So the council well, that's strange because I've just I'm on my seventh arrest warrant today. And who I've have you arrested? Very physical. I've got three physical and a few more with bail. Right, those are those. The, okay, those arrest warrants. Have they got a judge's signature on it, or are they signed by somebody that's called Justice of the Peace that won't identify themselves as a real man or woman? They're issued. Let me see. They're issued by. Um, let me have a look at them. This one here is signed by the Justice of the Peace on this warrant. There we go, see. So if you get an example of a warrant that you've got there, then, an arrest warrant, at the very top of the paperwork, is there any logos or stamps or anything? Stafford Magistrates Court. And is it an embossed seal? The, these, are, these ones are just um, photographed with a breakdown of the accounts. No, you know the actual logo, the Staffordshire Magistrates Court logo? Yes. Does Is it actually squished into the paper like an MOT certificate and embossed into the paper? Those are the ones I think that we actually have to keep at the office. So no, no, not but... Not in case they get obviously lost or damaged when we obviously do things. Right, well, it. unfortunately, what has to happen by law is if you're going to act on any sort of warrant... You need to take the original paper with the wet ink signature from that judge and that judge has to put their full human being name underneath their signature. So, for example, if I was a, um, if, if I was a judge and my name was Dave Smith, I would have to put my signature in wet ink 
and then underneath it it would have to have printed Dave Smith Magistrate and then the court that I'm based at, for example, Staffordshire Magistrates Court, as it were. And at the top of that uh, warrant it would have to have the actual Staffordshire Magistrates Court seal, which is, usually there's like a square waxy section to the paper where they, they actually put the paper into a machine that squeezes down onto the paper. It doesn't drop ink or print ink or anything like that. It actually squeezes the um, court seal so we, onto the we warrant. Have it for our, um, our certification. Sorry? We have, the, we have the same thing for our certification. Yeah, you see, I'll come to that word in a second, but... If you go to arrest somebody, you have to have the original and you have to hand that to the party involved for them to to analyse before you can act upon it. Because what we're seeing quite often is um, bailiffs and, and enforcement officers, as you were, won't actually turn up with the real paperwork. You'll leave it in the office because you don't want it to get destroyed or you'll, you'll come up with other yeah. excuses. But if you don't turn up with the actual one, you have no authority whatsoever. Because the thing is, is the one that you've just explained to me, underneath the squiggle of signature, it just says Justice of the Peace, doesn't it? Yes. And what that means is that whoever signed it isn't a real judge or magistrate, because if they are too frightened to put their magistrate's human being name under their signature because it's fraud, which they know, they won't accept liability in the matter should they be wrong, because that's how the law works. If I try to sue you, for example, for something, I would have to sign my name and print my name as a human being to state that if I'm wrong... You can counter sue against me or prosecute me under criminal law if it turns out to be fraudulent documents, which in this case it does, because there's no um, there's no contract in the matter for the person that we're calling about to actually pay council tax because she's never signed a contract that agrees that she'd pay council tax, which is why when you go right back to the magistrate they won't actually issue a real warrant. They'll just issue a pretend one, which some of the bailiff companies call an EX96 form, but under no circumstances will it ever have a real wet ink signature to be given to the person at the door, nor will it have a waxy type court seal squeezed into the paper so that it's either sticking up or pointing down. You know, like the do you remember the MOT certificates back in the day? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the same with the certification, the emboss it on the certification. And you have your yeah, but have they got have they got a yeah. judge's yeah judge's signature? Well, the thing is, in, to cut to the chase with that, there is no provision for a bailiff or enforcement officer in the UK to request audience with a magistrate or judge in order to obtain a warrant of anything signed by them and sealed by them. The only time a warrant of anything can officially and lawfully and legally be executed or um, dealt with is if the police are acting upon a, a warrant of arrest, for example, under criminal law. And, of course, this is just civil law. So that's why you guys are getting turned away at the door all the time, because you don't have the correct paperwork. And whatever your offices are telling you, they're brainwashing you into believing that you're doing the right thing. But all you've got to do is investigate, t take ten minutes out of your day, and ask... To go, we'll go nip to a local court and ask them to show you what real warrants look like. Because the justice of the peace underneath the scribbled signature doesn't stand. Because there's no human being who signed it, even if it's a real pen, and pen to paper signature. We can't identify them as a man or woman. Not as a bailiff or working for the bailiff company, but as a man or woman. We can't identify them in order to prosecute them for acting fraudulently because nobody will put their name to it. Do you get me? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. So what I require of you then as representative is that you cease and desist um, knocking on the door and posting letters through the letterbox um, forthwith unless you can turn up with a real signed... Uh, warrant with a real court seal the original wet ink document for her to take off of you close and lock the door telephone the um, courthouse or whatever and actually make sure that there's a real human being with that full name 
at the other end who authorises that that is a legitimate warrant. Yeah, I'll put a note on the phone. Brilliant. So that's that's the stand that we make then. That's for... Um... Yep. All right then. Oh, what was your name oh, again? It's, it's Mr McKenna. It's on the letter. Mr. What's your first name? Is it Neil, did you say? Neil. Neil, brilliant. Right, thank you very much then, Neil. Speak to you soon. No problem at all. Cheers, bye. Yeah.